Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're counting down our picks for the nastiest behaviour ever filmed on live television. You judge children. Yes. On their names. Yes, Holly. Brace yourselves, because things ramp up very quickly. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. Number 10. Ice Cold – BBC Breakfast Being the new person at a job always brings a lot of pressure, and it doesn't help when someone is clearly trying to make things harder for you. That's what seemed to happen to business reporter Hannah Miller when she was tasked with doing a report on an ice cream maker. When throwing back to Naga Munchetti, she was met with this response. I bet you wish you were here now. <laughs> I don't like ice cream, Hannah. It seemed like she was deliberately making things difficult for the young reporter, and it was genuinely hard to watch. Do you like brownies? Mmm, not so much. Thankfully, Charlie State called her out for her behaviour after things wrapped up. Do you think you rather brought the tone down then? Oh, be quiet, come on. <laughs> well, but Hannah was, I apologise. She's working hard, doing the story, and then... Uh, time now for a look at the headlines. Number 9. Ganging Up. Loose Women. 3,000 people complained to Ofcom after the cast of Loose Women faced Kim Woodburn in a very uncomfortable to watch moment. Exactly, is it that Colleen has done that annoys you so much? Ask Colleen. Kim and Loose Women's Colleen had beef that went back to Celebrity Big Brother. In an attempt to reconcile, Kim went on to the show, but it quickly turned out to be a four against one situation. My dear, done. you're my dear. You're a horrible, self centered believer. Linda even called Kim talentless and referred to her as a demon and a witch. It's no wonder Kim ended up walking out after being grilled about the fallout, with all four panellists being on Colleen's side. I wouldn't want to sit and talk to lion well, trash I think like that's you. Sad. We're pretty sure this isn't the best way to attempt a reconciliation. Number 8. Tetris Trivialising Sky News Now Tetris has long been touted as a video game that just can't be beaten because it just goes on and on. Impartiality should probably be the number one priority of any news outlet, no matter how small the situation may seem to them, but that was certainly not the case with Jane Secker on Sky News in January of 2024. A young man named Willis Gibson did the unthinkable. After 30 years of people taking a crack at it, he finally beat the NES version of Tetris. What's more, he was only 13 years old when he did so. What was Jane Secker's expert insight on this achievement? Well, the following. As a mother, I would just say step away from the screen, go outside, get some fresh air. Beating Tetris is not a life goal. Unsurprisingly, internet users were absolutely appalled by her behaviour and called her out for belittling what the boy had done. Ironically, she was also worshipping 16-year-old darts player Luke Littler at the time. So really, what makes one better than the other? Jackie, would your advice and my advice be to that child to step away from the video console? <laughs> Number 7. Boris Slips Out – Good Morning Britain During the 2019 campaign run, the Tory government was facing a lot of criticism. In order to clear the air and acknowledge some of these issues, then Prime Minister Boris Johnson had promised to talk to Piers Morgan and Susanna Reid on Good Morning Britain. Morning Prime Minister, will you come on uh, Good Morning Britain, Prime Minister? <gasps> Only he didn't. That's when correspondent Jonathan Swain attempted to talk to him live on air. Prime Minister, will you deliver on your promise to uh, come on Good Morning Britain? Of course I will. Thank you. Johnson once again said he'd talk to them and then proceeded to leave and hide in a fridge, making sure his minders held the reporter back. Ready to go? <laughs> it was clear that Johnson had no intention of discussing these important matters. Number six, parent blaming. Good Morning Britain. When newsreader Mark Austin brought his daughter onto the show to discuss eating disorders, they did an excellent and very honest job of highlighting their experiences. Austin noted that he was distraught that he hadn't caught the issue earlier, and host Richard Maidley, as if like a shark smelling blood, jumped on this. Now, probably because of all the programming that I've done, particularly with Judy, about anorexia and eating disorders, I'll say this, I probably would have clocked it. He seemingly pointed an accusatory finger at the father, 
saying that he would definitely pick up on whether his children had an eating disorder. But you've been really honest, Mark. I mean, really, you mm. know, sort of self-critical and said, you totally screwed up. You didn't recognise it for what it was. Well, you just I thought d- she was being a silly girl. It's hard to take these comments as anything other than a brag about how much better of a father he is, or how Mark Austin failed as a parent for not acting sooner, despite the common knowledge that sufferers can be good at hiding things from those around them. So when you were getting it wrong... Yeah. And how long did that period last for? What kind of things were you saying to her, which of course weren't doing any good? Well, uh, Number five, pure disrespect. The Russell Harty Show. Grace Jones has done it all. Model, musician, actress, the list goes on. So Russell Harty was in no position at all to look down on her when she appeared on his show back in 1981. Can you smell her at no, all? No, I've got my own body odour perfume. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and keep it on a slightly higher level if we may. <laughs> Admittedly, she wasn't in the best state after a long week, but she made sure to be her best self when the cameras started rolling. The same cannot be said for the show's host, who repeatedly threw sly comments her way. What's worse, he showed a complete lack of respect for the star, by constantly turning his back toward her. Don't turn no, your no, back on me anymore. Turn, I can't look at you. Ah. It's little surprise that Jones lashed out in a now legendary moment. Good on her for defending herself. What, you're going to tell me why? Because men always make the fashion for women, that's why. Number four. Gordon Ramsay got inappropriate. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. You're probably rolling your eyes right now because, well, it's Gordon Ramsay. But no, he wasn't yelling and swearing at the people around him. That's the Gordon we know, but the Gordon we don't know was actually being super inappropriate when he was talking to Sofia Vergara on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno back in 2010. I never screamed like that in real life, you know, I was all acting. Uh, Only in the bedroom. (laughs) Not only was he mocking her accent, he made several rude innuendos and touched her inappropriately. People claimed Sofia was visibly upset. I never screamed like that in real life, you know. I was all acting. Uh, Only in the bedroom. (laughs) It's hard to watch, and it's still not clear whether he's apologised for his actions. To Colombia, they'll see you. (laughs) That's right. No, I'm not watching. (laughs) Number three, Clarkson's Rage, The One Show. Who makes great efforts not to offend. And we've got Jeremy Clarkson. (laughs) Jeremy Clarkson barely goes a day without ruffling a few feathers. Most of the time, It's harmless fun, but when the former Top Gear host appeared on The One Show in 2011, his comments led to major backlash. At the time, there were ongoing public sector strikes, and when asked about his thoughts on the subject, he came out with some things no one was expecting. Frankly, I'd have them all shot. The comments put Jeremy in a really bad light, and it's unsurprising that this segment was met with an insane amount of Ofcom complaints. 21,000, to be precise. Of course, those are Jeremy's views. <laughs> <laughs> just, Only Jeremy's just given... views. Number two, too far, GB News. GB News has been labelled as controversial by many over the years for inviting guests like Lawrence Fox onto the show. In September of 2023, Fox appalled viewers with his comments against journalist Ava Evans. We're past the watershed, so I can say this. Um, show me a single self-respecting man that would like to climb into bed with that woman, ever. Instead of merely disagreeing with her politics, he instead took aim at her personally, in a tirade that was very uncomfortable to watch. You don't need these sort of feminist 4.0. They're pathetic and embarrassing. Who'd want to shag that? His words against her were branded as misogynistic and landed the show almost 9,000 complaints to Ofcom. It's little surprise that GB News has since distanced themselves from Fox. And also I'd like to add that I'm not saying any of this stuff because I know I'm going to get sacked tomorrow. I'm saying this stuff to clear my own conscience. Number one, assault live on air, top of the pops. Early in his career, Jimmy Savile was the face of the weekly music show, Top of the Pops. He continued to present it for over a decade. The audience members were meant to be over 18, but oftentimes they were younger. In this chilling clip, Savile is speaking directly to the camera while his hand is out of sight. A girl beside him jumps sideways out of his way. You can assume what happened here. In the 60s and 70s, it was not uncommon to see male TV presenters acting inappropriately with young women on air. If this behaviour had not been normalised, perhaps Savile's actions at the time would have been seen for what they actually were. Abuse. What appalled you when you saw it on TV? 
let us know in those comments below. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.